Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Adoption of Breaktop, Road to Whipped, Episode 2. Let's get right into it. Episode 2. Number 2. Episode number 2. Yes, sir. We're getting it. We're doing it. Thank you guys for watching the last episode to Road to Ripped, the first one. Very, very cool to see all you guys watching. Again, this is me taking pre-workout and dying because that old pre-workout, that is some sour stuff. It's sour. Washing it down with some water. Yes, sir. And now, I'm going to talk through um, my workout. I'm also going to kind of give an update. Kind of say what's what. Say how I'm doing. All that stuff. Working out, exercising has been going really well. Um, I'm not sure in terms of like the last time I up uploaded a, a road to rep. I'm, I mean, now I think about it, it's a week ago, but um, in terms of going to Planet Fitness and doing miles on the elliptical, uh, in the last 49 days, I am at 115.79 miles. Wow. I looked up um, some exercising I had been doing last year, and like compared to where I was last year when I was going to Planet Fitness and doing stuff on the elliptical, I, I think I'm like 30 miles ahead of where I was last year at this time, which was really cool. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been getting after it, getting results, continuing to work out. <clears throat> I, um, in the last three months, when I was kind of really starting to exercise, uh, I mentioned this before, I was at like 280. Um, my heaviest, I was 285 um, this year, and I'm currently down to 263-ish, so 20 to 22 pounds I've lost, and it's great. Uh, right now I'm about to do some push-ups. I'm telling myself I don't want to do this, but got to do it. Uh, about I'm about four days into counting calories, which I chose a really bad time of the year to start counting calories because it is my town's fair week, which means lots of greasy foods, lots of fatty foods, lots of sugary foods, sugary drinks, elephant ears, funnel cakes, french fries, onion rings, all sorts of meats. Pork wings, ribeye, hot dogs, hamburgers. It was a really bad day or week to um, count calories. And that's okay. I, I went to, that's me saying I did 13 push ups. I went to the fair with some friends last Wednesday. And before I went, I went to Planet Fitness and I exercised. And I hadn't eaten dinner that day, so I, I did eat four pork leans, which is like four pork meat sandwiches, and I had an orange ice cream float. But you know what? I had room for uh, those calories. I think I had like 14 or 1,500 calorie points for that day I had room for. So I ate a lot, but I had a lot of room. Anyway, really, uh, really great food at the fair. I'm sure some of you have even gone to the fair that are listening. And yeah, it's a great time. I'm about to do the bench, normal bench press with the 20 pound dumbbells. <clears throat> I'm about to do, I'm just checking to see if the camera can see me at cam. Um, What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing here. 
But um, yeah, so I think I'm about to pump out 57. 57. Bad boys, get in the gloves. Get in the gloves. The old workout gloves, which yes, they're not cool. You know, I wouldn't suggest doing the gloves if you want to look cool. <clears throat> yeah, the fair, the fair is good. Um, my elementary school uh, that I went to when I was younger would run one of the elephant ear booths at the fair. And, you know, these last couple of years, actually, they have not been doing it. And I think part of it was, you know, because of COVID, you know, a lot of ingredients prices skyrocketed and they just haven't had the means to pay for those increased margins. That makes sense. Uh, but man, when I was at that elementary school and even a few years after, I spent, I don't know, five or six summers working in that elephant ear booth, making some money. Um, I don't remember how much they paid me back then, but I made, I made some decent money working the fair back then because it was nice because you get in for free, then you also get paid. So you get in for free for that week that you're working, but you're also making some money, and you also get elephant ears. So it was a, it was a good time. It was a good gig. Um, they used to have bump, bumper cars. Uh, they don't anymore. Sad times. Um I used to repeatedly just go on the bumper cars over and over again and just ram into people like, hey. <laughs> uh, there was also this one ride where the, um, the, the the part that you get into, that you strap into, they were like shaped like paper airplanes and it like made a loop. And I, I don't like heights and I remember I was with some buddies and... <laughs> They were like, let's go, let's go. I was like, okay. So I got in. And gosh, I don't remember how old was I was, 12 or 13. But, man, I cried. <laughs> I bawled on this thing. I was like, <laughs> wasn't a good look. It wasn't a good look. But, yeah, the fair is always a fun time. Uh, whenever the fair happens, I always think of the tractor pole because... Our town also has the National Tractor Pull. And it's a very loud and it's late at night. And I've never gone. I don't plan to go. People get pretty rowdy. Um, people drink a lot of alcohol. Uh, and I drink alcohol, but not nearly as much as the people that go to the Tractor Pull. But, you know, the tractor pulls loud engines, and then you hear the announcer on the speakers yell, full pull, full pull. And it's just kind of annoying and silly. You know, if you like that sort of stuff, that's great. That's great if you like that sort of stuff. But I do not do that sort of this stuff. I do not do those things. But uh, in other news, I don't know if I've talked about it that much, but the job I work at, <clears throat> had some ups and downs. I like my boss, and I like the work itself, but the board that's in charge of all the money-making decisions, I don't always agree with some of the decisions they make, and that's kind of normal, I think, for a job, but recently, my boss, my supervisor, went to bat for me he went to the board and he talked to them and he convinced them to give me a three dollar raise and you know you're not supposed to talk about salaries and stuff but I got a big raise and that was kind of something I had been hoping for but it was a little out of the blue and it's it's awesome it's great um yeah because I like that job and I like my boss you know my boss is really relaxed really chill um uh, it's really casual, you know. I've worked for bosses in the past, like in college, that, like, I had one boss in college while I was working on a paint crew, which went around painting the buildings at the college. This guy, I won't name him, but literally this guy yelled and screamed 
Well, actually, no, that's wrong. For the first two weeks, he was fine. First two weeks, he was fine. I don't know what switched. But after the, after the first two weeks, something switched. And he just, every single day, I kid, I'm not, I'm not, you know, blowing this out of proportion. Other people that work during that summer can verify. And the management had multiple complaints. And eventually, years later, they let him go. I don't know why they kept him on for that, however many years after. But anyway, every single day, something would happen. And he'd just blow a gasket. He'd yell his head off and scream and yell until he, until he was red in the face like a tomato. And I'm like, I'm not talking like loudly talking. I'm talking top of the lungs, yelling and screaming. And what's crazy is he didn't just yell at the student workers. We had part-time workers that were probably, we had a part-time worker that was a professor. And our boss, this crazy, angry guy, one day he yelled at the top of his lungs at this professor. Yelling at, yelling at the top of his lungs, yelling at the top of his lungs and just going crazy. Now, I will say that was act, ugh, that was actually 10 years ago. I kind of want to throw up a little. That was that was literally 10 years ago. I, I was a decade ago. I want to throw I'll throw up a little bit when I say that. And I'm sure that guy I like to imagine that he's gotten better. He's not as crazy. You know, his justification was, you know, not during the summer he ran a professional paint crew. So he was like, I have a level of perfection that I'm like, I'm expecting and nobody's getting it, and blah, 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 blah. But that's, that's not an excuse to scream and yell at people. Anyway, all that to say, I have a, my current boss is really great and went to bat for me and got me a raise, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, it's a seasonal, it's a job I work in the spring, summer, and fall, though, uh, when the weather's nice and you can be outside. So in the winter, I'm going to have to find something else to do. I'm, I'm going to try to find a job I can make money on my computer because it would be nice if I can stay at home and make money. But if I have to like do, a, do something like be a dishwasher for four months or work work in some other position for four months then that's fine I can stomach that it's just for four months uh, for the last couple of years I've done janitorial but you know it's a good job and I respect all the people that do janitorial but I do not want to continue to do janitorial uh, because man it's you you really have to be you really have to love routine you have to be okay with manual labor and you have to be okay with getting dirty um it kind of just, just depends on where you're working um i won't say where this was cuz i don't want to blow up this space but you know i worked for an elementary school uh one year and for the most part, it was okay, but there, man, I mean, uh, uh, we're talking elementary school, so these kids, some of the kids were, you know, five, six years old, and five and six-year-olds, sometimes, especially if they're uh, emotional or going through a hard time or going having a bad day, they uh, don't, don't control their uh, bodily functions that well sometimes. And so when I was working at that elementary school, maybe twice a week, or sorry, not twice a week, once every two weeks, which doesn't sound like a lot, but like I worked there for like a school year and a little bit of the summer, like once every two weeks, I, I would have to clean human fecal matter, like off of the floor, off the toilet seat, off the wall. And every single time I'm like, man, do I really want to do this? Because I was that was an additional job I was working in, in accordance or alongside my other full-time job that I'm working now. 
And man, see, I, I just don't want to go back to that. But like I said, it, it kind of depends on where you are. There was another janitorial job I did where I was working in offices, um, cleaning business offices. Uh, and that job actually was fine. Um, the work itself was fine. It was a lot better than having to clean up after little kids because, you know, a business office, you know, you have adults. And so adults are potty trained. So, well, at least most of them. And so that work was actually, the work for the, some of those buildings wasn't terrible. Um, but yeah, right now, what am I doing right now? Am I, I'm either changing the song or I'm like double checking like my alarms for stuff. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, earlier today I had just uh, visited with my cousin and her husband and her brother, my other cousin, and my cousin's daughter, who's like three. And uh, uh, we had a great, great old time. We had a great old time. Hung out, talked about all, all sorts of stuff, caught up. Um, they're doing good. They're good people. Um, but Sundays, I normally wouldn't have done that because Sundays, um, I'm like usually working uh, my job, but I was able to, look at all that sweat. Yeah, look at that sweat. Uh, t this, this Sunday was a little bit different because my boss uh, offered to switch this Sunday with next Sunday. So next Sunday I would have been off. Uh, and I would have worked this Sunday, but he said I can be off this Sunday and I could work next Sunday. So I was like, oh, yeah, sure. So I was able to hang out with some family and uh, have a good time. And see, that's the kind of stuff that I was talking about, uh, where my boss is a cool guy. You know, he, he's willing to do stuff like that. He's willing to work with you. Uh, he's flexible. Um, and that, that's a sign of a, a good leader, good boss. Um, but today is Sunday. And so when I'm not at the church service that I am a part of, that I go to groups for on Wednesday, um, I like to listen to the sermon because they uh, live stream it or they post the live stream later. Um, and today the, the pastor, um, who actually might listen to this later, um, great guy, great guy. Um, he talked about worshiping God and having an attitude of worship to God. And he talked about how so often when we experience negative things, um, we are quick to question God. Like when we're in a bad point in our life, we say, why? Why God? Why have you, why, why has this happened to me? I don't deserve for this to happen. But, he said, when the opposite happens, we don't have the same attitude. When something good happens, we don't say, why? Why, God? Why did this happen to me? I don't deserve this. And so, he talked about, I believe, Psalm 33. And, uh, yeah, it was just a really great, enlightening sermon um, you want to check it out? It's on. If, if you you can YouTube H two O B G Church, and um, really great, really great stuff. Really great, awesome messages. And so, because you know, that's something I've been working on. You know, in the past, I have all. It, it's been easy for me to. To, to, to feel like how he was saying like because ultimately because ultimately it's a little bit of a pride it's a little bit of an ego issue to, to say okay God like not only do I not deserve these negative things but I deserve good things which you know to a certain degree like to a certain degree that makes sense 
but if that's your whole attitude in life, you're just kind of being self-entitled. And there are definitely times in my life where I was self-entitled. Where I was like, God, I don't deserve this crappy thing. I deserve all the good stuff because I'm awesome. And, you know, as a Christian, ultimately our beliefs are are um, not about self-serving. Our beliefs are not about selfishness. Our beliefs are about selflessness. It should be about serving others. It should be about wanting to worship God, wanting to love God, wanting to love people. And when you're putting yourself first all the time, when you're self-entitled, when you're saying I'm better than everybody else, it's it's kind of, it's kind of hard, kind of hard to serve other people when you put yourself in a position of pride and ego. You have to you have to humble yourself to be able to serve. That's not an easy thing to do, and it's something I've been working on. That's that's a an important thing to think about as a Christian. But in other news, I'm jotting down um, what what I'm what I've done. In other news, I am purchasing. Uh, actually, this coming week, I'll be getting a electronic bike. Yes, sir, electronic bike. I'm gonna be one of those guys. But I'm I'm pretty excited because um, gas prices have have gone up these last couple months. They're starting to come down a little bit, but. They were really, really high for a while. Um, and my workplace is, is within like 10 minutes of walking distance, distance, which, you know, if I bike to work, that's like half of that, a third of that, you know, three to five minutes, which really it's about the same if I were to drive, when I drive my car. Because <clears throat> I have to start, you know, stop and go at stop signs and all that. Uh, but when I ride my bike, I'll just like zoom in and out of traffic. No, I'm just kidding. No, but when I'm on my bike, you know, it'll be good. I'll be zooming around, and so I'm excited about that. I'll be able to lock my bike up in the shop, and I've actually made space to have put my bike in my apartment. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see the table. That, I'm, that has all that stuff on like there's a little bit of more space to the left and I'll actually like have my bike next to that table to the left to the left um, so I'll be one of those guys You got people who are listening to this I live in the same town as me I see, you might see me biking around zipping and zooping and uh, cruising it'll be a, a good time so I'm hoping to save some money on gas. Um, definitely. In other news, I'm doing these kneeling lateral rows, whatever you call them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But take that drink, drink that drink. But in other news, I've also been doing some... Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, oh. <laughs> flexing, flexing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, in other news, I've been doing some golf lessons um, with my friend and another lady. Because um, I also, also do golf lessons in my spare time if I can. Which also, by the way, hey, shameless plug. If, uh, if you are in the northwest Ohio area and you're looking for golf lessons, search Golf Lessons with John on Facebook. Lessons are $40 an hour, and they're done at Dixie Driving Range. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have no bad reviews so far. No bad experiences so far. Anyway, been doing some golf lessons with a lady, the my dad's cousin's wife. So my dad's cousin is the husband to the person, the lady that I'm giving golf lessons to. Um, and also giving golf, golf lessons to my one buddy because he is going to be playing with my dad, our mutual friend, uh, and, a, and myself in a golf outing coming up this upcoming weekend. And so those golf lessons have been going really well. I actually need to edit the videos for that and put them online. I, I keep forgetting to do that. Um, but this the, the lady came in and um, she hadn't golfed that much in a while and she was really struggling to get good contact and hit the ball well. And uh, you know, towards the end of the session, we had I was able to give her a golf club with a better shaft for her. And she started to get some good contact. And then uh, my friend, who I've been doing lessons with, um, he, he doesn't really golf that much. Um, the one time last year, I, we did some lessons. And at the end of our last lesson, he was starting to hit the ball well, or whenever that was, two years ago, whatever. And um, But he hasn't golfed that much. But we have done... Uh, two golf lessons in the last few weeks and the first one was okay um, he was still struggling at the end of it but he hit some good shots but the most recent one went really well um, uh, he he, he kind of realized that he wasn't squatting in the squat position for when he was swinging he was just kind of letting his legs do whatever which in the when you're swinging a golf club, you want to kind of get into a little bit of a squat position so you can load your legs when you turn and get the momentum going, and get that torque and rotation. And also, uh, he's al he was also using golf clubs that were very, very, how do I call it? Um, the skill level for those golf clubs he were he was using were for people who like were super super into golf like he was one of the clubs he was using was a adjustable club which you can change the loft on but also it had weights two weights that you could screw on and off on the bottom of it and so a, a club like that that you can add weight to that is a lot heavier than a normal golf club it's a it's a lot heavier than a normal golf club and so that's designed for somebody who can swing the club really fast and somebody who can who is very strong someone who's probably a little taller than he is really just somebody who's swinging out of their shoes every time and you know for a begin it's not a beginner club and my friend's kind of a beginner so he, he was using a golf club that was not a good golf club for him to learn on. And then also, um, he had a, another golf club that he was using, which is a driving iron, which is also kind of another golf club that is for an intermediate level. People who have experience, people who know how to hit the ball. You know, that's not, uh, that is not a beginner level club. And so in our recent lesson, I gave him a driver that was not a crazy driver with weights on it that was cr created for, you know, Chris Hemsworth to hit. Um, and he, he hit the other normal driver, like, really well. And then I also gave him a, a uh, Cobra hybrid um, golf club and co hybrids are normally referred to as rescue clubs because they can be hit from pretty much anywhere 
They have a lot of forgiveness. They're very user friendly. And like in comparison to a driving iron, they're a lot easier to hit. And so he started hitting the hybrid, the Cobra hy hybrid, and he started doing really well. He started hitting some good shots. And we just had a good time. It was awesome. So again, if you're in the Northwest Ohio area and you are a friend, you know someone who was interested in golf lessons, I do golf lessons for $40 an hour at Dixie Driving Range. Please feel free to Google, or sorry, Facebook, Golf Lessons with John. And that's where you can find my golf lesson information. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so right now I'm doing the jersey press. It's called that because you're imitating putting on and taking off a jersey. But in, a, in I don't know, two weeks, a week and a half, I plan to do um, the workout that the actors from 300 did, which is a crazy movie. Um, but the actors that uh, from 300, they were insanely ripped. College, I did a variation of that uh, um, workout, and uh, it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy workout. But I'm gonna try to do a variation of it, but uh, or like do some of the exercises from it, and maybe do maybe incorporate more of the exercises later as I start to get used to them. So this is what the exercise that the actors from 300 did. You start with 25 pull-ups. I, right now, I could maybe do like three pull-ups. If I were to do like more than three, it, they'd have to be on like an assisted machine or something like that, where like you have weights that you can put in or take out that press up against against you that help you pull yourself up. After pull up, 25 pull ups, you do f 50 reps of deadlifts with 135 pounds, which 135 pounds is not a lot. Oh, also, real quick, I almost killed myself here. I must have dropped that dang weight on my my dang dang self and almost knocked myself unconscious. Yeah, that just happened. Whoops, I almost broke my shoulder. Oh man. <laughs> so I'm gonna, gonna gonna make it so that I'm not doing that. And then I'll work on the Spartan workout. But after pull ups you do fifty reps of def deadlifts. They did 135 pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that uh, 50 reps of that is a lot. Then after that, after deadlifts, you do 50 push-ups, which that's a lot of push-ups if you're not used to doing push-ups. I can only I, I could probably do like close to 20 now, but I only do like 13 push-ups right now. After 50 push-ups, you do 50 24-inch box jumps. These are brutal. 50 box jumps, these are brutal. I remember doing these in college. There were a few times I'd go to jump on the box and I'd miss it. Like you'd fall. Those are brutal because it's a lot of coordination too. Then after box, 50 box jumps, you do 50 reps of floor wipers. Which if you don't know what a floor wiper is, it's an ab um, exercise where you lift a... Um, bench press bar above you with weight on it if you want and you move your legs from side to side doing like a twisting motion and that you're like wiping the floor 
and do 50 reps of that. Now this is the uh, now this then after that this is that one exercise I like that I'll probably incorporate first it is clean and press uh, with kettlebells. Do 50 reps of that. Uh, they did 36 pound kettlebells. They did 50 reps of clean and press with 36 pound kettlebells. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but doing 50 reps with a 36 pound kettlebell that's a lot. And now. I did get to a point in college where I was doing like 30 reps of like a 30 pound kettlebell and I was in good shape. I was like 220, 230. I was in good shape for my ethnicity. But 50 reps of 36 pound kettlebells, that's nuts. And then you go back to pull ups, 25 pull ups. which is nuts. That's a lot of reps. It's a lot of reps. You, it's about shredding fat and toning muscles. It's pretty, pretty wild. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at this, looking at this uh, article about it and, uh, this article says all exercises are done without scheduled rest between moves. Obviously, this is an advanced workout. You shouldn't do it unless you are already in great shape, which I would say I've made here. I've made good progress. But like if we're talking percentage wise of like me being able to do the Spartan workout, like I'm at like percentage wise like 20% maybe I, could, I might be able to do half the reps that they did probably I'm, and I probably wouldn't be able to do that um, but here they, they uh, break down uh, alternative variants of exercises you can do to like get yourself ready um, now here they say now th these are these are what they say 15 body weight rows which is uh, I believe that's where you like you sit on a thing and you pull weight towards you then you do 25 body weight squats which is just squats 15 push ups 50 jumping jacks uh, 20 mountain climbers 10 close grip push ups and then 15 body weight rows. So if it's me, if I'm looking at this, I could probably do that workout. But if I'm trying to make it for where I'm at, I might substitute the jumping jacks and the mountain climbers with some amount of burpees. And I might substitute the body weight rows with uh, single arm clean and presses. Because I can, I can do that with my dumbbells. Um, I, I was at a point at one time where I was doing, I believe, what is it, 30, 28, 30 pounds um, single arm clean and press last year, I think, with the dumbbells I have now, because I think, because I would take off the weight, the heavy weights on one and put all the heavy weights on one handle, and I think that's like 28 pounds. I was doing single arm clean and press with that. So I'd, I would put in the single arm clean and press for that. And then I probably would also add some sort of ab thing. Like like, like I would either, I would probably keep like leg raises or leg holds like what I'm doing right now. Um, or I might add some more, I might add some other ab stuff. That is the Spartan workout. Not an easy workout. Very difficult for advanced people. I, I don't know if I, unless I go crazy, unless I go like if I, unless I spend the next six months, like going crazy out of my mind. In terms of exercise and working out, like I don't see myself ever being able to do the full workout that they do. Like if I, 
like like if I could see myself if I spent the next six months of just dedicating the majority of my free time to counting calories, eating supplements, eating pre-workout, eating protein shakes, cardio, push-ups, prepping myself and building myself up. I think in six months I could get there, but like that's we're talking like that's a lot of effort, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of pain. So I definitely could do that, but uh, I don't know if I want to, because that's, that's just craziness. That's just crazy talk. Uh, and I, I don't know if I'm really about that life. Uh, I, but like I said, uh, I definitely, uh, like in two weeks or a week and a half, I'm going to incorporate some of the things. I'm going to incorporate clean and press. I'm going to try to incorporate burpees. I'm going to try to do more push-ups. Um, do some squats. And get it going. Get it going for sure. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Spartan workout. Pretty crazy workout. 100%. Now, I don't want to get too much into this next topic because I want to make it its own video and I want to go more in depth on it. But recently, I don't know how much weight people that are listening to this put into the Enneagram. Enneagram. Also, oh, I'm done with the workout. Yay. Now I'm going to do something fun. I'm about to do something fun. Um, I don't know how much weight people put into the Enneagram, Enneagram, but I recently joined a Facebook group for type nines because I'm a type nine, which is considered like a peacemaker. And um, I, I posted to that group and I asked a question. I said to that group, I said, you know, you know, I don't know if this is the right place to ask this question, but... You know, in general, I've been having some improvement and progress in other areas of my life. But one area that I really struggle with is dating. And, I, and I'm not sure why. And so I just wanted to ask for advice about dating to other nines that are like me. Uh, and maybe I might be able to see some of my own weaknesses and my own failures. And if you guys have any advice, that would be greatly appreciated. And you know what? Surprise, surprise. A lot of people had a lot of great stuff to say. And I kind of want to share what they said. I want to share my thoughts about that. I want to dive deeper into uh, that conversation. Um, now, if you guys have ca can, can do de detective work, if you guys can put on your thinking caps, you will notice that in one of my previous videos, I talk about being a 29 year old virgin and I consider myself celibate consider myself celibate I've taken an oath of celibacy and you might say well now hold on a, now hold on a dang old second here now oh organic organic protein yeah <laughs> three months past that expiration date <laughs> don't worry I googled if you can take protein past its expiration date you can as long as there isn't a bad smell and it doesn't look like it's clumped up that protein looks normal tastes normal so I'm good I just need to make sure I, oh throw on the gloves throw on the gloves I just need to make sure it doesn't smell weird or starts to clump up and then I need to stop taking it I just need to make sure it doesn't oxidize but anyway so some of you are, might be thinking, now hold on a dang old second now. You said you was a, a celibate. So you dang old took an oath of celibacy. And that's true. But what what is the, the dictionary definition of celibacy? Well, oh, chocolate milk. Got to mix in that chocolate milk. Game changer. Game changer. Now, the textbook dictionary definition of celibacy is not having sex and not getting married. 
Now, that still stands. I don't plan to get married soon. I don't plan to have sex anytime soon because as a Christian, that's something I value. And I want to be able to give my future spouse, my future wife, the gift of my virginity. And that's just something I want to do. If that isn't the case for her, that's okay. But, you know, I have to get to that point. I have to date somebody, you know. And that's what I got to do. And so I'm just asking for some advice on how to do that from people that perhaps think like me. And uh, so I I think, I don't know if it'll be the next video, but one of these upcoming videos, I will talk about that. I'll share some of the information that... Uh, the people sent to me, I might post some screenshots. Of course, I'll keep an- anonymity for those people. Don't want to expose them. But that's the one of the things up next on the docket. I have a couple more other uh, video ideas, really. It just comes down to how much time I have for recording and my schedule. Uh, certain videos will take you know more or less time, etc., etc., but that's the next thing on the docket. Thanks for watching another episode of Road to Ripped. Number two, adopted guy works out. And now I'm drinking that dang old protein. I'm drinking the dang old protein. Thanks for listening, guys. And I'll see you on the next episode of Adoption of Breakdown. Bye-bye.